so the peace talks between Marvel and Sony have sadly broken down, and as a result of this, Tom Holland and Spider-Man are going to be heading back to Sony. I didn't want to dedicate another whole video to this, so I've already given my thoughts on it, and if you want to hear my thoughts on it, then check out my previous video. I'll leave a link for it down below. It's a shame, but it seems it's the price of doing business. On a slightly less dreary note, same day I went out and got uh, Avengers Endgame, I also got through the mail my DVD of Elseworlds. So it's something a bit more cheery to talk about. Elseworlds was the CWDC crossover event that happened in the fall of 2018. The third big crossover event, and technically the latest one in D in DC CW's long line. And this one feels a bit me feels to me a bit like I, I, I already did a video of it last year, but Having rewatched it, I feel it's time for a redux and see whether my opinions have changed. I feel this is kind of the same way I look at Avengers Age of Ultron, which is, it's good. I mean, honestly, I feel this is one of the kind of great comic book kind of crossover episode storylines. And what's weird to me is, to be honest, setup episodes are you I found I usually don't like, especially with the CW Arrowverse. But to explain that a little bit more, let's go a little bit back in time. Now, the first kind of... You could argue that the first kind of crossover they did was Arrow Season 2 episodes, The Scientist, Three Ghosts, etc. Because that's the first time we saw Barry Allen, played by Grant Gustin. But I think the first official crossover came with their two episodes in Arrow's third season and The Flash's first. The first being... Flash's Flash versus Arrow, and Arrow's being the Brave and the Bold. In which, uh, Fla Flash versus Arrow, Flash is seemingly affected by one of his villains, Rainbow Raider, causing him to go into an uncontrollable rage, and Arrow has to, the Green Arrow has to go calm him down, and in the Brave and the Bold, they team up together in order to take down Captain Boomerang. Which is a pretty fun episode. I mean, I do prefer The Brave and the Bold a little bit more than Flash vs. Arrow, but that's just a personal taste. And the next year we got Legends of Today and Legends of Yesterday. Now that is one of the kind of set-up crossovers that, looking back, while I probably thought it was good at the time, I'm not immediately keen on it you know, these days. Mainly because it is mainly a, cross a set-up crossover for... Legends of Tomorrow, with it introducing the final two members of the team, Hawkman and Hawkgirl, and also introducing the villain of the series, Vandal Savage. So, yeah, I do feel that the second one was mainly a kind of setup. But one year later, they went one bigger and did Invasion. Invasion was huge, seeing characters from all over the DC CW universe, and even the introduction proper introduction to the team of Supergirl, coming together to stop the Dominators. It was big, it was brash, brash it had all the kind of superheroes you love fighting alongside each other to defeat the Earth from aliens. It was just brilliant. And one year later, in I think 2017 it was, they, they actually managed to do better than that. Apparently... When they sat down to write the next year's crossover, they went, okay, we did Aliens last year, what can we do this year that's even bigger? How about Nazis? And they did it. They did Crisis on Earth X. And while that one is technically a setup as well for the spin-off cartoon Freedom Fighters The Ray, I feel it is bigger than Invasion. It's bigger, it's more badass, it's got more characters, it's, it's just huge. Now, Elseworlds, I feel it's kind of a step down from Crests on Earth X, but once again, it's still enjoyable. I mean, it focuses on three parts across the series of Flash, Arrow, and Supergirl. This time, the Legends finally set this one out. But the first episode, which is within the Flash, shows that Barry and Oliver have 
seemingly through the work of one villain, switched lives. I mean, Ol- Oliver is now has super speed and is married to Iris West, and Barry is now the Green Arrow. Which, they try to convince their friends that something isn't right, that this isn't who they're meant to be, but of course their friends don't believe them, so they have to go to Cara Danvers, a Supergirl, for advice on the matter. To which they also learn how to use each other's kind of abilities, now to use their personalities in order to become better heroes, and eventually have to stop an evil robot named Amazo, who is actually right out of the comics, which is good to see. Part 2, which is the Arrow episode, shows them track the villain who's responsible for the matter, John Deegan, down to Gotham City. And where there they also encounter Kate Kane, also known as Batwoman. They, and they also discover that John Deegan was given the book by being known as the Monitor, seemingly as a test for their world for an upcoming crisis. And the final episode, which is the Supergirl part of the crossover, sees the villain kind of double down and change everything, so that Barry and Oliver are now criminals. The villain himself is now kind of masquerading as Superman, played once again by Tyler Hutchlin, and Kara is kept in a prison cell at Star Labs. Now, once again, it's weird because normally I feel like setup crossovers, that crossovers that are set up for another show usually aren't quite as good and this one is a bit of a glorified setup for Batwoman starring Ruby Rose who apparently got a lot of flack when she was cast in the role so much so that she eventually ended up deleting her social media accounts for it but honestly I feel she's great in this I mean she's only really a big player in part two but once again, I feel she does really, really well in the world. I mean, she's cold, she's cynical, she's snarky, but then she's also mysterious, and she does have a heart to her. And I do feel she is a good part for the part of Batwoman. And I feel, overall, it is kind of a good... Once again, it is a good story. I mean, once again, it does in, have introduced two characters back that I've kind of wanted to see kind of take part in the crossovers for a little while. After seeing the previous year's crossover, Crisis on Earth X, when they finally showed up with Alex Danvers, I kind of feel eh, maybe next year they should try and introduce kind of Superman or possibly Martian Manhunter. And this year they did. They also introduced us to, or at least finally introduced us to, this universe's equivalent of Lois Lane, played here by Elizabeth Tullock. And once again, she she's a good take on the role. I mean... Everyone's going to have their favourite Lois Lane actress, whether you have, whether you go for someone like Erica Durance, whether you go for Amy Adams, or whether you go here for Elizabeth Tullock. I feel she's a good fit for it. I mean, once again, she's not your typical damsel in distress. I mean, she's tough as nails. I mean, she does, of course, have her one moment where she does have to be saved, but even then, they don't frame it as a oh damsel in distress moment. They frame it as a genuine kind of love moment between her and between her and uh, Clark, played once again by Tyler Hutchlin. And they do show the two have a genuine love. I do feel it's their relationship I do feel is rather adorable. They do also they build up and once again the climax is I think the highlight of the crossover. They manage to do so much in the big final battle that frankly it's unbelievable. And they just throw so much superhero fun at you that it's impossible not to like it. So, while I don't feel that Elseworlds is maybe quite as big as something like Invasion or Crisis on Earth X, it is still a good good crossover to have. I mean, once again, it was a setup for Batwoman and also for this year's big crossover, crossover event, Crisis on Infinite Earths. But I feel it's one of those setup crossovers that's done well. It's done really well, and you know while I while I think I would still hesitate on watching uh, the ones such as uh, Legends of Today or Legends of Yesterday, I feel that one I would be happy to rewatch every now and again. So yeah, small redux on my thoughts on Elseworlds. I think it's pretty good. Can't wait for Crisis on Infinite Earths. Ooh, how are they gonna do that one? That's gonna be interesting to see.
Anyway, until then, see ya.